today we're going to be talking about how to play and sing interesting songs you and everyone else should love. Why should you listen to me? I've been teaching music for over 12 years, written a bunch of books on music, and they've sold a couple thousand copies, over 14 million views on YouTube across different channels. This is why you should listen to what I have to say and take it to heart. So, unless you have a perfect match for all the instruments in the song you want to play, it's not going to sound exactly like the song. So, if your favorite song is, oh, I don't know, don't stop believing by Journey, unless you've got a piano with the exact effects on the piano, oh, a singer, uh, two guitar players, a bass player, and a drummer, it's not going to sound exactly like the recording. So, understand that from step one, whenever you're going to play an interesting song, a song that you really want to play, it's not going to sound exactly like the recording unless you have every single instrument, every single element that is present in that song throughout the entire song also present when you are making music as well. So understand that when you are playing, singing, whatever instrument, any voice type, you are going to sound a little different than the recording. So a really good question to ask is, okay, how do I get whatever I'm doing to sound close enough to that song, the song that I really want to play? How do I get it close enough to that song that I recognize it and other people will recognize it too? And once we ask this question, we can come up with some really cool solutions. So we know, so far, you're not going to get it to sound exactly like the song, but the goal is going to be to say, okay, how can I represent this song, whatever song it is that I want to play, how can I represent in a way that I'm going to recognize it and everyone else is going to recognize it too? So here's a couple ideas for you. Number one, you can learn part of the song instead of the entire thing. So especially when you're first starting out in music, or even if you've been playing music for a while, it can take a lot of work to learn an entire song, as opposed to just learning maybe the first 30 seconds of a song, or the last 30 seconds, or maybe just 90 seconds of the song. So you can split the song up into chunks. You don't have to learn the entire thing for you to have fun playing it and for other people to go, oh, wow, that's really cool. You're playing that song, and I recognize that song. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. So you can actually always go back and learn more of it later. So bite off a chunk of the song that you think you can get together probably in about a month. I wouldn't push it further than that because then you can start to get really tired of it. And whoever's hearing you practice will also get very tired of it too. <laughs> So we can actually drill down even further and say, okay, within that one part of the song, you could learn one part of the part of the song. So for example, you could just learn the melody, or you could learn a guitar riff, or you could learn a piano pattern, or you could just learn to sing and kind of play the basic chords. And then what you do is when you're going to play for yourself or play for other people, you say, all right, guys, I'm just going to play you this part of the song. Like, I'm just going to play you the bass part from Don't Stop Believing by Journey. And I'm going to be like, ooh, okay, cool. Now, how you take this to the next level is you play along with the recording. Playing along with the recording is a great way to not only impress people, but you're also going to have a ton of fun practicing playing along with the recording. So you're going to impress people because they will hear you sounding good with the recording, and they're going to think it's all you. They don't know the difference between you just playing and you playing with the recording a lot of the time, by and large. So you can also have a lot of fun practicing because instead of a metronome, you'll be jamming along with your favorite artist or band, and that can be a way more rewarding experience than just practicing with a metronome. Now you could also learn a version of the song that's easier than the original of the recording but still recognizable. Okay, how do we do that? We do that with music theory. We could say, okay, what are the chords that are being played in the song and then how do I just represent that on my instrument in an easy way? And so the goal is not always to try and get as close and copy the song as close as you can, but sometimes you could actually recreate the song in a totally new way, but again, that's still recognizable to you, and if you're playing it for anyone else, recognizable for them as well. Because if you want to impress people, you want to have fun with people, you want them to recognize the song. So think about all the artists you know, modern artists, who have smash hit songs, and then they go do an acoustic version and then they go do a dance remix, right? It's like you hear the start of a dance remix of like Rolling in the Deep by Adele, and you're like, well, I have no idea what's about to happen. And then you hear her vocals, and you go, oh, okay, this is Rolling in the Deep by Adele. So that's a totally valid way as well of representing the song. You can wrap it up. It's like the same piece of chocolate, right, the song. You're just putting a different wrap around the piece of chocolate, and that's totally cool to do too. So... 
Those are some really solid ideas, and that's what I've actually done with my own students over the years to get them closer to actually playing the song. And even if it's a very complex song, just taking a verse and a chorus, you know, condensing down the harmony, the music theory to make it easier to play on an instrument. So the next question to ask is, okay, Dan, I've done that, but what should I do if it doesn't sound like the song to me? Well, the first thing to check is the speed you're playing at. So if the song is, and roughly, don't quote me on this, <laughs> just a small town girl, right? And you're going, just a small town. Yeah, it's like people are gonna be like, what are you doing? I have no idea what song that is. So you need to make sure you're playing at the right speed. Too fast, it's unrecognizable. Too slow, it's unrecognizable. And then you need to balance it out with how complex the music is, right? Because if it's very complex, you might only be able to play that slow. But if it's easy enough, then you can speed it up. So you can also try playing it in the original key of the song. So a lot of times if you're singing, you're gonna change the key of the song to fit your voice, to really make your voice shine in its best light. And if it's not quite sounding like the song to you for a moment, go back and just play it in the original key that the song was recorded in. Oh, okay, I hear it. The next thing is change the arrangement. If it's still not sounding like the song, change the arrangement. Change what you're doing, change the rhythm. Try playing more, try playing less. Experiment with different ideas. Next thing you could do is you could find licensed sheet music for your song that's at a level, excuse me, easy enough for you to play without months and months and months and months of work. You know, like at Best Music Coach, we have a level system, level one, level two, level three, level four. When you play level one, you can play all the level one songs. That easy. So what I mean by that too is don't rely on tabs and chord charts on the internet because a lot of them are wrong. And then the last point I have to make is that if the song is still not sounding right to you, you're going, yeah, you know, I know I'm playing the right chords. I know I'm singing the right notes. Uh, I, I know I'm playing the right bass line. I know I'm playing the piano the right way, but it's still not quite sounding like the recording to me. It could be early days for you, and maybe your ears are not quite developed to hear the connection between what you are doing and the original song yet, and that's okay. That's fine. One more idea for you, you could go to a music teacher and say, hey, I would like a simplified version of song X. So I wanna play Journey, uh, don't stop believing, uh, but I wanna do it within the first month of me starting guitar. It's like, okay, how do we simplify it and get you there? And a teacher 100% can break things down and make things customized for you. And with that, those are my tips on how to play and sing interesting songs both you and everyone else will love. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to go ahead and pop them in the chat on whatever platform you happen to be on. Roderick says, hey Dan, good morning everybody and God bless all. God bless to you. Roderick, hope you're having a great day. Another Facebook user says, good morning, everybody. Well, good morning to you, dear Facebook user. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And we'll wait a couple seconds because sometimes it takes a minute for the questions to start coming in. But if anyone has any questions about how to, how to go about singing and playing interesting songs that you and everyone else will love, go ahead and pop those in the chat. Any platform, if you're on Twitch, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, if you are on Twitter, go ahead and pop them in the chat. We'll give it a second. Yeah, so when you think about going to a teacher and asking them for a custom arrangement, that's really cool too because especially if you've been working with a teacher for a while, the teacher will be able to say, okay, I know what you're able to do and so I'm gonna take everything I already know you can do and I'm gonna tailor this song to your current level of ability so you don't have to go learn a whole bunch of new things. And that's really what I mean by, you know, don't spend months and months and months and months and months trying to get a song together. It's like, learn a song that you can get together in a month because otherwise you might actually get sick and tired of playing music because you're sitting there doing the same thing over and over and over and over. You need some wins. You need some wins. You need to get in there. You need to play a song, get it, move on. You need some wins. Okay, Facebook user says, I hate the sound of my voice and don't know how to start to improve it. Ooh, 
hate the sound of your voice. Tell me more. What do you hate about the sound of your voice? Get as descriptive as possible. I'd love to hear it. Like, g go all in. Everything. I would love to hear about how you hate the sound of yours. And while you're figuring that out, I will share a story about when I said this to someone. So I go into a, I go into a music shop and I say to the guy, look, I need a microphone that's going to make my voice sound different. And he takes a second and he looks at me and goes, okay, you need a microphone to make your voice sound different. All right. What's going on with your voice? And I'm like, well... I just, I just don't like it. And he goes, well, what about it don't you like? And I was like, uh, it's not powerful enough. He goes, okay, okay, so you want some more power? What else? And then I go, um, I want it to have more character, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> How do we quantify character in a voice? Okay, I mean, yeah, there, there, there's ways we could talk about it, sure, but it's like there, there's no objective, <laughs> there's, there's no objective metric, right? And so, and so I go, well, okay, all right, so I want character, I don't want it to sound stronger. And he goes, all right, what mic are you using right now? And I was using some really cheapo, like, $100 thing and you bought off the shelf. And this was years ago. Like, $100 mics now getting much better than they were even five, ten years ago. And he's like, huh, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've used that same, I've used that same mic and my voice sounds okay. Well, what's going on? And I was like, well, you know, there's this little raspy sound I'm hearing in it. And he's like, okay, a raspy sound. And then he's like, he sings and he's like, uh, 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 uh. it's like the most raspy voice you've ever heard. He's like, this is my natural raspy voice. And I love it. It's like, <laughs> beautiful. Okay. So the Facebook user follows up and says, okay, coarse and wobbly and can't carry a note consistently. Well, I'll tell you, that is most likely down to technique issues. Unless you've had vocal surgery or you have vocal, like actual, physical, um, any kind of, you know, and by the way, all, all the, every scenario I'm listing now is highly unlikely. So it's like most likely 99% the issue is technique. 99% of the time, coarse, wobbly, can't carry a note. That's technique. That's how you are using your vocal mechanism to sing, period, full stop. 99% it's that. 1% possibility um you just had a cold uh you have lots of seasonal allergies um you had vocal surgery uh you had um throat cancer um you ha were born with a vocal defect okay so th those five options are about a one percent possibility 99 percent 99 99 percent excuse me 99 percent probable that it's just your technique. So I highly recommend, if you're not already taking some singing lessons that talk about technique, that's what you need to do. You need to really sit down with a singing teacher who's gonna be very patient with you and just walk you through the basics. And you also need to be very patient with yourself because if your voice is coarse and wobbly now, most likely you're gonna have to overwrite the entire way you think about singing. And that's going to take a month or two for you to really groove with. So be patient with yourself, show yourself some love, and groove with a good teacher. How about cadence? How does that relate to technique? Okay, cadence. What do you mean by cadence? Do you mean timber, like the quality of the sound? So T-I-M-B-R-E, timber, timbre, would be the, uh, the quality of the sound. So the way we can tell the difference between a violin playing and a piano playing, that is timber. They can play the same notes. Yeah, let's, let's do this. That way we go. Ba, ba. Which one was the voice? Which one was the guitar? You could all tell, even though it was the same exact note, and you could tell because there's two different timbers. The quality of the sound was different. So cadence in music theory is the way we change chords. Cadence in the way someone talks could be like the lilt of how they talk. So what exactly do you mean by cadence? I would love to know. Vocally, cadence, how does cadence vocally? Yes, well, well I'm not sure what you mean by, by vocal cadence. Like, you mean how it sounds? Like, the way you deliver the words? What precisely do you mean? And then I can give you a, 
then I can give you some advice. Uh, another Facebook user, and we'll circle back to that. We'll keep things moving. Uh, another Facebook user says, "Did famous lead singers just uh, have the gift? Uh, just uh, just were, were lead singers, great lead singers, born to sing, or did they take vocal lessons?" Okay, assuming delivery. Yeah, delivery. Um, okay, well, delivery is impacted by technique. Delivery is impacted by fundamentals. Delivery is also impacted by the amount of music experience that you have. You know, we could we could sort of summarize that into taste. Like, what's your taste for how you deliver something? You know? So that would come from listening to a lot of singers, but then also practicing a lot and really learning your voice as well. And then making sure that once you have the technique and the fundamentals, those are the tools, and then you use those tools to be yourself and express yourself, and that's how you become a unique singer. It's like everyone needs to learn the techniques. Everyone needs to learn the fundamentals and do those the right way. And then it's like, how do you use those tools? That is what is going to define your sound, your cadence, if you will. Okay, now to answer the question, did famous uh, lead singers just... Uh, were they just born to sing or did they take vocal lessons? Many of them both. You know, it's like think about Olympic athletes and not all lead singers. I mean, look, look, let's look at like and by the way, I'm not knocking anyone. I'm just saying if we compare Janet Jackson to Adele, that's apples to oranges in terms of singing. It really is. And so it's like, OK, which one's better? Neither one's better. It's two different ways of approaching the art of singing pop music. You know, and so it's like people who have big ranges. Yeah, a lot of that is biological. A lot of it can be trained as well. Um, and so it really, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you should limit yourself because you feel that you were not born with the training. Because I mean, even like, uh, so I talked to Felix Cavalieri, incredible singer, uh, the lead singer for the uh, Rascals. Uh, you know, it's on good love. And um, I, I talked talk, talk with him on my podcast and he was saying that he went through most of his career without once taking a singing lesson just based off his natural singing talent. And then he went to do a Broadway show where he had to sing for a couple hours every single day and his voice started getting worn down. And he had to go take singing lessons then to actually understand how to use his voice correctly, how to coordinate his breath with his voice. So it's like a lot of people who are born with talent what talent means is you get to skip the line on certain things and certain parts of music, but talent never means that you skip bad habits and you are naturally going to do things in a healthy way that's sustainable in the long run. And it's sometimes it's possible that, you know, it is statistically possible someone could just show up, be born, and do everything technically perfectly. It's statistically possible. It's highly unlikely. And so the question really comes down to talent versus work. And I will tell you, after working of, with hundreds of students, the students who make the most progress and get to their goals and actually achieve what they want in music are the people who want it, and it has nothing to do with talent. If you want it at a 10 out of 10, you will do it. If you want it at a 3 out of 10, probably not going to make it. So, yeah, it comes down to how much you want it, how much you're willing to persevere, how much work you're willing to put in. That's really what makes the difference. And it's like a lot of the famous lead singers you hear put in so much work. It's like the perfect personality combination tied with talent, tied with work ethic. But there, there is a biological component. It's like, yeah, ambition, yes, but ambition's not the word. Ambition means you, you have a desire to achieve greatness, but you need to put the work into doing that. You need the perseverance because ambition, ambition is like sticks on a fire. It can burn up very quickly, but desire and a need and a want and a pull on like a soul level, on a heart level, that's like a big thick log you could throw on a fire and it'll burn forever. And you want to burn big logs. You don't want to burn sticks when you're trying to get to your goal because you burn sticks, you're going to burn out. That's how you burn out is you go after a goal the wrong way with the wrong mindset the best way to burn out. <laughs> you just be like, I want to do this and I'm going to do this in a month. And then you like sing till you have polyps on your vocal cords. Yeah. Discipline. Yes. Discipline is everything. Discipline equals freedom. 100%. Biological component is real. Like I will never run as fast as Usain Bolt. I will never 
you put you look if i was born on the same day as usain bolt and i had the same trainer and ate the same diet and ran the same amount like i literally copied usain bolt in everything he did i would never run as fast as that man because there's a biological component at play where he is just that little bit faster than and by the way i'm not saying he's a little bit faster than me he's a lot faster than me but in the grand scheme of like olympic runners he's that like one percent faster than everyone else Sunny the Flying Cat says, I feel like I sound better when singing out loud than when I put it in a mic. Well, Sonny, that's probably because you're not used to hearing your voice in a mic. You also might be tensing up when you're singing in the mic uh, because instead of using your ears to hear what you're singing, you're piping the sound in through headphones and then your ears are hearing the headphones. So I always tell my voice students to practice in three or four different ways. I tell them to practice by themselves, you know, in a room, just like listening with their ears. I tell them to practice with headphones on. I tell them to practice with monitors and I tell them to practice with in-ears. And then within those four ways, I tell all my students to mess themselves up purposefully. So it's like, turn your monitors down low enough that you can hardly hear yourself and all you hear is the track you're singing along with because there's gonna come a time when you perform where the band's too loud, the mix engineer's talking to some girl and like you can't hear yourself and you can't get the mix engineer's attention. So it's like prepare to mess yourself up. Like Michael Phelps' coach had him practice doing the butterfly with his goggles filled with water to make sure that if his goggles filled with water at the Olympics, which they did, he would still be able to win. So it's like practice in situations where you put stumbling blocks in front of yourself in a safe space where you can practice what it's going to be like on that stumbling block. And so it's like use your creativity to think of all the possible ways you could mess with yourself and mess with your exercise that you're doing to make sure that you find yourself in any situation you're going to be able to deliver. Roderick says, I'm learning my songs a cappella style at first to know the lyrics. How should I find music or create beats to fit my songs? Well, okay. So learning my songs. Okay, so you're writing songs. You're learning songs first a cappella style. So a cappella, for anyone who doesn't know, that means just voice alone, basically. Uh, and then how should I find music or create the beats to fit my songs? Well, Roderick, I will tell you that there's a very easy way to do this, and it's using something called music theory. And if you know music theory, you can use that music theory to not only set your lyrics to melodies, understand what the melodies are, and then figure out chords that might work behind your melody. You do all of that using music theory, and you can learn all the music theory to do all of that in just about 90 days. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And so to be a little self-serving here, I do have a 90-day songwriter program where I literally walk people through all the music theory it takes to write a song, put lyrics to a song, put notes to the lyrics, the words, and then put chords behind those notes and literally create your songs in just 90 days. I've got a program for that. I'd love to have you in there and show you what it looks like to, be a, to, do, to do a self-serving plug, but like really. Um, I've got a great solution for that because that that is one of the biggest issues uh, facing people who want to write their own songs. It's like, well, you know, I studied poetry, so I've got the lyrics figured out, but it's like, what on earth do I do now? So if you're interested in my 90-day songwriter program, type hashtag ready in the chat, and I'll be sure to follow up with you after the live. Again, hashtag ready, and I'll be sure to give you that info after this live session. Does anyone else have any other questions? Questions. Okay, so what I'll do is while, while waiting to see if there's any more questions, I'll just do a quick breakdown. So look, if you wanna turn your songs, your ideas, you wanna go from idea, inspiration, all the way through having your own song, like you need some music theory, not a whole lot. You, you know, like you don't need to be like Beethoven <laughs> levels of music theory. You just need enough to be able to understand everything that's going on, understand what a key is, put everything together, and then harmonize your melody. That's just about it. Like I said, it's not a tremendous amount of theory that you need. It's just about 90 days it takes to learn all the theory. And then you have that skill for the rest of your life and can make songs whenever you want. 
How cool is that? So that, that's really the overall strategy for being able to turn ideas all the way into songs. And with that, doesn't look like there's any more questions for today, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you all so very much for watching. Great tips and feedback, says Facebook user. Oh, I love that. Let's highlight that. Yes. Awesome class today, Dan. You are so welcome. Thank you all so very much for watching. My name is Dan, the company's best music coach. We offer books, courses, live lessons. Check out bestmusiccoach.com. And if you're on YouTube, there's links in the description below this video with links to the books, links to the courses, links to the lessons. Oh my gosh, go check it out. And I will see you all next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. It really has been an honor to be able to come here and share this with you. I'm so, so grateful for this opportunity. It means the world to me uh, because I really wish I had someone sharing this kind of information with me when I was first starting out. So this really has been an honor and I'm very grateful for this opportunity to share with you all. Have a fantastic, phenomenal rest of your day. Take care and...